Richard, coming off a of quarterfinals last week in Winston-Salem, how excited are you to play the first time out on Ash? Well, it's a great feeling, especially I felt uh, much better last week uh, during this summer. So what do you need to do to be successful tonight? I think, uh, you know, take any small chances if I get any and, uh, and use them if I can. So then we'll see what happens. Good luck tonight, buddy. Thank you. All right, let's wait for Novak Djokovic to come out. Oh, in the red tonight. Novak, 11 and 1 in your career in night matches. What is it about the New York evening crowd for your game? Yeah, it's very special. I think the most, uh, most special, um, you know, night sessions uh, anywhere on any tournament in the world. So I really look forward to it. It's the first match of the US Open this year. So I'm super excited and hopefully I can perform my best. First time playing Richard Varenkis. What are you expecting from him and what will be the keys for you? Well, just just trying to be, you know, very committed from the first point. And um, he's he's a very talented player. He was best junior. He won Grand Slams. He won U.S. Open in juniors. Now he's he's, he's slowly coming up to uh, you know top of the men's tennis. So I you know have to be uh, top of my game. Good luck tonight, buddy. And ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the players for tonight's first match, Richardus Bernankis. And Novak Djokovic. at the U.S. Open. Thank you for joining us via usopen.org. This is Al Troutwig along with Luke Jensen. And you're looking at the number one seed, Novak Djokovic, a six-time Grand Slam winner. And a penny for your thoughts. Richardus Barankas, the best tennis player Lithuania has ever produced. Uh, that's not the tr that's not the case. Vitas Gerolaitis, Australian Open champion. Good catch. Half, half Lithuanian, the Jensen brothers. So I'm taking 50% of that that grateful dead feel and but it, I, I hate to say this Djokovic is going to be a little too much what a skyline so Djokovic won the Australian Open he was part of that emotional scene at Wimbledon when Andy Murray finally broke through it feels like he's been around for a lot longer than 26 years of age he's been on the scene for so long as a teenager really come into his own the last couple of years. I believe the one thing that has kind of slipped a little bit, that guys have kind of caught up to that elite level, his serve. His serve type kind of abandons him from time to time. He needs it to be a weapon for him to win. 39 and 7 on the year. Last year it was in the final again against Andy Murray, and Murray finally prevailed, but that became a long marathon. So it was nice to hear Novak Djokovic he read the Marinkus resume. Well, these guys are, are students of the game. They really do their homework. They know exactly who they're playing. You do a lot of scouting by asking other guys in the locker room, other coaches in the locker room. There's a network out there to get a feel for guys like this. You know, it's one thing to he has so many tennis players called Brayton all in addition to Vilnius, Lithuania. To come here and win the show, that's great. 
really think he felt when the draw came out. He said, I'm playing who, where? Opportunity. When I, when I see him walk around the grounds, watching practice, I'm really excited. We've been, Cliff Wayne has been following this guy for a very long time. I'm really excited to see this guy come through and all the success. So it, it's fun to see someone from the homeland do well. But when he starts talking about how do you, you know, I get to play the world number one tonight. He's attacking emotionally, and that's a really good sign. So, Mr. Half Lithuanian, have you been there? I have been there. I have been What there. is Lithuania like? Well, it, they really like their uh, potatoes, and they really like their farmland, and they enjoy a lot of uh, different you know, sports like soccer, and they enjoy their tennis. Tennis has actually been a big deal. I've played in the, uh, the 86 Goodwill Games. If I'm not mistaken, the 1992 Olympics in Barcelona is where that whole Grateful Dead thing started with the Lithuanian basketball. Yeah, Marcelonis was one of the uh, NBA basketball players. He was playing for the Golden State Warriors at the time. And the uh, Grateful Dead being the Northern Cal band. And uh, the Grateful Dead just sponsored him, gave him the Grateful Dead tie-dye jerseys. And you'll see the fans littered around here in Arthur Ashe Stadium. And they're wearing the tie-dye stuff and supporting the support the homeland. So you never used to see the men start the evening. Yeah. I know. Change is constant. I think this is going to be a really nice matchup. I think you're going to see a little bit of what Djokovic has been working on with his with his footwork, his balance, especially his second serve. Much upside. He's one of these guys. Look at him. He's thick. This guy is, is really strong, a little bit behind his shots. A big part of the conversation yesterday when Ryan Harrison was eliminated in the first round was his record against top 10 players has never beaten one. But well, Baranka says not beaten one either, and he's 0 for 4 in that regard. But these are the experiences, the looks that he needs, just the, to the, the shop. He's going to go back to the practice court and figure out a way to get better, stronger, faster. Electronic line calling in use tonight. Sort of used to that by now. On the biggest stage in tennis here as the lights begin to take hold. And the sun goes down behind Manhattan. How about Novak Djokovic, Luke? 13 straight Grand Slams reaching the semifinals. He has really turned himself into a mentally tough machine. I think when he really changed his diet, like two or three, four years ago, to that gluten-free diet, he really solved a massive Part of the puzzle for him where he was getting tired early in, in desperate situations. He, he wasn't recovering fast between points. Remember, these, these athletes only get 25 seconds to recover between points, so the fitness is critical. He was a little bit ahead of the curve on that gluten thing. Absolutely. And the Mets are playing tonight right across the, the street. Yeah, the lights yeah. are on at City Field. Lots going on. Grounds are absolutely packed. It's so much fun walking around, people watching here at the Billie Jean King National Tennis Center. I mean, the internationality, if that's a word, of the crowd is really great. So playing a match at twilight at the U.S. Open, a little something new for Barangas. It's going to be very interesting to see what Barankas does coming out, the kind of strategy he tries to deploy going after Djokovic. Seats here. A massive spotlight for this young talent. John Blom, the Australian chair umpire for tonight's proceedings. And I've always thought of that events that we've talked about it last year in the final. Starting in twilight, heading into darkness, there's something very dramatic about that. What do you tell your players at Syracuse to think about right before a match? Really block out the noise, block out all the distractions, get down to how you want to start this match. Mentally, tactically, physically, understand that you put in all the work, all the prep, and you've got to make sure you think about the now. What is going on right now where you can affect the match and play your very best tennis and start Please, thank season. you. First set, Novak Djokovic, Christoph. The way 
gets around this forehand Love passing shot. And look how smooth he is. He gets out here, doesn't panic, just a two-shot dipping pass. He wasn't trying to win the point on a winner. He just wanted to get the ball low and force Djokovic to hit up if he got a racket on it. 15-0. Really. There's a lot of crowd movement in the first few games of this one. Sometimes they think well, that, that long hit with Barangas was one of those times that Djokovic seems content to let the, the rally go for as long as it goes. And sometimes I think that, that leads to problems. Well, if he allows the other guy to get into a rhythm, get into a groove. <laughs> and it's a tactic that he likes to use because he knows on the other side they haven't trained as hard, that he has the lung capacity, the endurance. <laughs> to really work this like an anaconda squeezing the opposition and working on those legs and working on that, that fitness. Okay. So Enjoy after a promising start, Djokovic takes control. First game. somebody wanted, it's impossible. Now, Barankas is nervous at all. This is where it's going to come out. You serve this ball in the stadium, you throw the toss up, and you see rows and rows of people, faces and colors. He's going to mix it up a little bit. A little drop shot. Drawing in Djokovic is, is, is very difficult because he's so quick up to the ball. And he's very capable around the net with solid volleys, forehand and backhand. Let him. Let him. guy just starting to get his feet wet. Oh! And Djokovic is just so good, especially off the backhand side. So there aren't many options as an opponent to find a weakness. Oh. There's that skill around the forehand volley. Racket head is up, watches the ball right into his strings, and then cuts a nice little short forehand volley for the winner. Well, at that time, it seemed as though he wanted it over. Wasn't going to play around. The ball is really getting on the Lithuanian right away. The ball is deep off of Djokovic's racket. Lots of good placement off the forehand side. It's extremely composed right now, Djokovic. Fifteen 
15 0. Really nice backhand. Steps in. Good footwork. Turns sideways. Drives the ball cross court. Nothing wrong with his first serve so, so far yeah, in this set. Yeah, that is really, really nice. The placement, there's a lot of bite on it, a lot of bend and shape to that wide serve. There's the serve has been a big difference at the start of this match. Start a match. Djokovic leads, three, Djokovic leads three. Love in the first set. Just getting started here in Flushing Meadows. Did you see anything today that surprised you? No, pretty much everything went according to form. I, Isner played really good in three straight sets. Had a, a slight hiccup um, in, I think, the second set. Burdich looked really good. This is a guy who got a. He's got an interesting draw. But, He's one of these guys in the finals of Wimbledon. Big, big potential. Won Davis Cup for the Czech Republic last fall. I just, I just I, this U.S. Open is really kind of just starting to take off and watching a lot of practice. I've been doing a lot of research around the practice, see what the guys are doing with their, their fitness, their footwork, how they're preparing. What are the hot topics? You know, right now, you know, Sharapova being out, that's that's interesting because she really fell off the pace. Right before Wimbledon, you got in a little spat. Serena and Sharapova got in a spat, and she never really recovered. Had a bad loss at Wimbledon early on. Fired Jimmy Connors after one match at Cincinnati. That was kind of weird. Kind of weird. Well, I, it, just, it didn't make any sense. I mean, and I think the young Americans, to be perfectly honest, I mean, Sloan Stevens, I mean, there's so much potential there. But it's on the women's side, it's Serena Williams' tournament to lose. I mean, she went out last night, and you called that match. She lost the game, and she was ticked. I mean, she wants to win every point with every swing. That intensity is awesome. Break is really has to play a quality game here. just getting out hit he's only he's serving less than he's not he's serving 40 percent first serves in after that that last one Djokovic is serving 90 percent first serves in Fifteen. You know, 126 that's a quality shot right to the tee and tactically if you're going to attack Djokovic in my opinion you try to get in on his forehand his forehand can be temperamental at times. He likes to place that ball around the court using the forehand. I'm really, I've always been impressed with Djokovic's backhand. It's the dangerous wing. He can pull it down the line, short angle at cross court. Very good discipline with his footwork. So what I'm rank is I try to pick on the forehand just a little bit to try to get a couple of free points. So far, this one, this one is a lot like that match. Okay. I'd love to know how many millions of people saw that famous photograph of Schiavone hugging the ball point. Huge skid marks on the hard court there from Djokovic. Yeah, he really, his flexibility is range. I think it's very rare. See, there's that backhand. I mean, his footwork and balance is timing. He didn't even have to move. He just turned his shoulders and made solid contact. 
Don't you inflict major damage when you get a shot like that? Oh, yeah, mentally, you know? Well, we called a match a couple of years ago, Bert. He can challenge that. There he goes. He's going to challenge that. Frank is challenging the call on the left baseline. The ball is called out. It was the semifinals, the men's draw. Federer was serving 40 15 double break, double match point against Djokovic. Djokovic came up with a forehand winner return cross court to save that Jeez. match point, and then, and then Federer double faulted the very next point. He ended up losing that match. So, a good challenge. This is a major moment now. Just to get on the board. Just to somehow get a foothold into this match. Get your teeth, your claws into this thing. Because oh! the thing you don't want to happen is to get embarrassed. Right now, you know, you're getting bagled. You're just getting smoked. a massive challenge there to save that game, that backhand down the line. Now, how does Barankas kind of build off of that last game? Does he learn from the mistakes of Djokovic? Does he pick on forehand a little bit more? is extremely agile around the net. Right there, that was a tough little volley. And off the split step, he lunges out to his his left just to knock off that backhand volley, keeps a firm wrist, cuts the back end of the bat of the ball just to add a little backspin. A little acrobatic too. He kind of climbed the ladder to get that one back. If we see a replay off that kick serve, no, we're not going to see it. But he jumped up in the air. And Michael Chang back in the day made that a real popular shot. moments there but not enough of them so Djokovic, Djokovic holds serve four games to one. it's four games to one okay so Luke you're a coach yep timeout Barankas what do you tell him 
well, you know, where's the game plan? Where are we really trying to attack him? Right. To me, I just don't see a pattern. I see him hitting a bunch of balls, but I don't see purpose behind it. Now go back to, okay, what's this guy's, you know, weaker side? Where's, where are we going to get some free points? And I, I, I firmly believe by picking on this guy's forehand, Djokovic's forehand, it, you know, it's dangerous, but you are going to get some freebies. He sometimes, you know, overplays it, tries it for a little bit too much. That will open up the other side, the backhand side, so then you can go for your big shot. I think Brankis is hitting some nice backhands, definitely some nice passing shots. But he's got to take a little bit off of his first serve. He's down to 33% first serves in. And against one of the greatest returners, in my opinion, that's ever played. You know, I, I, I battled Agassi and, and Connor. Those guys were just magnificent. This guy is a hybrid of those two. He can be aggressive when he wants to. Djokovic can be very possessive when he wants to put a lot of balls in play. So if you're serving a low first serve percentage, he's going to climb all over. So take a little bit off the first serve, and then you want to attack this guy's forehand. There were 24 singles matches on the menu today here at the U.S. Open. These first few days are a lot of fun. So many players, so many fans. Tactical shot, 114 miles an hour, but he breaks it wide to pull Djokovic off the court. Fifteen. Sometimes it's good to take the testosterone out of the equation. Yeah. Just a little bit, just to settle down. He's just down to break. You think, okay. 4-1 looks bad, but in reality, you can get your service motion going if you start cooking there. So you got a 4-2, break right back, back on serve. His oh! first serve is starting to become a little bit of a problem now. The percentage down to 40%. showing his ability to run up the short balls, his agility, just fantastic from a completely still position to be able to run up and grab that ball. He's got so many different shots and hides it well. You really have no idea what's he going to do. Uh, 124 right down the tee. Low ball toss, fast racket in the motion, big fast arm. Open and Djokovic is now in a position to serve for the set. Yeah, he's putting hurt on Lithuania right now. He's everything's really working for him, and Brankis is not helping his cause. Brankis is making a lot of silly errors right now, especially from the ground. Average second serve from Djokovic, 101 miles an hour, but it sits right in the wheelhouse. Brankis just hammers that ball. Uh, he pulls that one out of his bag. Yeah, he's got so many different options right now. It's really hard to attack him just because he's bringing you in like this last one. Look at this drop shot. And he disguises it so well because it looks like it's going to be a deep slice, but at the end, he just cuts it short. 
that's all racket work. That's all you know, skill building right there that he's been able to use different areas of his game. Not just the power game, but the touch game. First one of those we'd seen. is down 5-1, but at least with a couple of break points right here, he can feel that he can break this guy. Well, this is Djokovic's worst game of the set, no question. Got to be a little bit more patient right there. Backhand wasn't in position to strike it with such pace. He works his way back to Deuce. separating these two yeah but miles and miles of years of experience at the elite level of the game I don't think he really, Barankas really realizes the foot speed of Djokovic. Djokovic is there in plenty of time, and there's an out. He kind of shanked that one. Frozen Barankas. Watch to hit the line. He had three chances. is out the set. He lost his way a little bit with his first serve in there. You mentioned the uh, serve speed, 126, I think, for Barankas, yep. 125 for Djokovic. What's your mile-per-hour threshold where a serve becomes big time? Well, it starts at 125. Once, you, once you're, you know, hitting 125, you've got a little bite on the ball, and anything above that is really great because you can bust him into the body, you can move it around, corner to corner, and it's really hard for someone to catch up to that. Now, 115 is solid, one, you know, those are bad, but as soon as you get to the 125 and start moving up the radar on that one, 130, 135, you start to get into some serious pace and heat. We mentioned the uh, Lithuanian supporters in the Grateful Dead t-shirts. We haven't seen them yet because there really hasn't They're hiding. been much to react to. <laughs> I think he came out with the right mindset, and Djokovic never gave him a chance, truly. Djokovic was serving big at the beginning, got those early breaks. 
What did you think of Djokovic when he first came on the scene and was doing the impersonations of Sharapova and all that? I, I, I like that personality. What bothered me when he was coming up is that he was extremely cocky and arrogant. A little over. I like an arrogant athlete. I like someone who's got a lot of self-confidence. But, I mean, there were so many times he was just a little over the top. And I truly believe he was just trying to make his mark. I mean, his country is so brand new. I mean, they're, they're, the whole... When I was playing, you know, the Yugoslavia was just starting to break up the Civil War. And so there's so much that was going is going on in his life as a kid that he had to sort out. And it was, you know, it just went into his tennis and he wasn't always playing his best. Mentally, he wasn't as stable. Now he is a total pro. Richardus Brank is to serve as we begin the second set. start it's the return of serve for Djokovic is such a weapon he takes control of the point right from the first swing it's the short ball and just rips it for a winner Brankis is just ba basically playing a better version of him. What do you, mean? you look Well, you look at the serving speeds, you know, 125, 126. If you look at, you know, the way these guys play from the baseline, drive the ball from both sides. Athletically, very quick and agile. But Jokic just does it better. The Brankis. Look at it. He, he, he's composed and everything, but right now he's down 6 1. He's struggling just to win points. Does he seem nervous? He doesn't seem nervous, but to me, I don't see his feet moving as well. He's got to really emphasize being on his toes. Because as soon as the feet go, then the strokes don't get set up as well and you don't execute as well. Figure out how to say don't drop shot in Lithuanian. But I caught my grandparents. Let me get out my translator here. I have an app for that. <laughs> we have an app for that. <laughs> so the drop stats. shot. Well, it's real simple. Look at the unforced errors. You know, first serve percentage down. You know, eight unforced errors, only five winners. But look at Djokovic. Yeah. Net points one. He's 0 for 3. Brankus at the net. It's a nice stat line for Djokovic. Ten winners, three unforced errors. Brankis, in my opinion, he's got to be more aggressive because if he doesn't start taking more chances, these points are going to happen more and more where Djokovic moves him around, kind of gets him out of position, looks for open courts, and then hits the open court winner. That's just a quality serve.
the crowd's waiting for something to happen, like a big shot, a big point. The first point was great, and we haven't heard really anything since then when Brank has right. hit that beautiful cross-court pass. One of the things you can do as a player here, especially at the U.S. Open, these, these fans are sports fans. They want to be drawn into the competition. And you can do it if you call to them, start, you know, getting them fired up. Well, in last night's blowout, I mean, it was very obvious. Serena was blowing Schiavone's doors off. And at one point in the match when Schiavone was really frustrated, she let out a jungle scream, and the crowd thought that was great. Got them one of the biggest reactions of the match. Oh, he's just lethal up there. And it's that they want to feel your emotion, whether it's your passion, your pain, your suffering, your success. They want to get involved. This is all theater here, drama. And it's very hard when you're getting smoked right now that Brankus just is getting is down 6 1 2 0. And he's got to find another gear emotionally to dig down deeper, to find more for the fight. Medagio Lasas Cadre. That is Lithuanian for no more options. <laughs> Crowd, they want to get into it. Right. I think he's lost a little bit of his swagger Swag. here, yeah, or whatever I, you want to call it here in the second set. likes to see it. He holds serve 2-1 in the second set. So there you go. Oh, there you go. Yeah. I like that. That's great. Have you seen good matches? Uh, no, not yet. I mean, uh, the women's match after this one is going to be the same exact situation. You know, someone under the big lights. And, uh -huh. Boy, when they put the roof on this place, it's going to dramatically change the feel. Wimbledon, it really drew the, you know, when they built that roof, when they close it, it draws everybody close. It just, it, that, that beautiful essence of center court Wimbledon is drawn even closer. So you're, it's a weird but exciting, intimate feel. But this place is so big. I just wonder how that is going to affect just everything. I think it'll make it noisier. Oh, yeah. Oh, absolutely, yeah.
Now, you really make sure that your racket is out in front in ready position. Then he gets back to ready position, and he hits that one. See the little pooper scooper shot right there from Central Park? You got to bring the pooper scooper with your pet, and you just, like, get it up to the side. That's a nice visual. Well, you don't teach that. I mean, that's just total reaction. And then the guy comes back with an ace. Way to kill the move. A lot of free points from that serve. Not all of them are aces, but he's placing it well. Djokovic has really put a lot of zip behind his serve, using his lower body, accelerating with the fast arm. Oh, early on in his career, that was a problem for him, too. He didn't have a reliable serve. He double faulted some on key points. Serve does come and go. It's funny, he's the number one player in the world, but he's a quiet number one right now because he lost to Murray here in the finals last year. He lost to Murray in the finals of Wimbledon this year. And it's not like people are saying, you know, I'm going oh. to put Djokovic in, the, you know, to win this thing. He's in the conversation. <laughs> Why do you think that is? I, I just don't think he's had the form, the results. They've seen him fall short last year. They've seen him fall short. Oh! It's, it, Murray just seems to have that it factor, even though Nadal's coming here with a lot of wins on the hardcourt season during the U.S. Open Series. I think he's part of the major storylines. I think that, you know, can Murray repeat? Can Roger Federer find his form again? Can Rafael Nadal win his second U.S. Open? Yeah, there's nothing juicy about Joker. Not right now. He's Not just right good and yet. solid. Mm -hmm. Forehand, deep cross court. Depth is king here for both players. Put your opponent on the defensive, on their heels. Serve and volley. I really like that. It, it shocks you when you see it. It really, yeah, it really, I mean, it's a smart time to do it. You're at 40 15. I mean, you're down a set and a break. Throw another wrinkle in there, but you've got to be ready to hit that volley. Set at least. 3 2. weather tomorrow. Good. I thought Lenny Kravitz was great yesterday. I thought Lenny Kravitz was One song. I know, but they have to get that court going. They have the national anthem. 
No, you didn't like the one and one? Nah, you know, I can't, you know. <laughs> You're not running the playlist. That's great. That's hard to do. Yeah, hard it's to, pretty yeah. hard to do. We couldn't do the trade tomorrow. Let's see if Barankas can turn that into a little bit of momentum. This is where he's got to take chances on the second turn. He battles the first serve back, just tries to neutralize and get the point. Okay, right, right here. Now you got love 15, start thinking tactically. You notice how right away the ball got onto Djokovic so quick that he couldn't, Djokovic couldn't react. Who's going to get their firepower off first? Who's going to get the weapon deployed first to take control? Yeah, he, he just absolutely didn't expect that ball to jump that high. And it's so important on kick serve. You can read the toss. When the toss goes over your, your opponent's head, the person serving, you've got to expect a topspin serve. And from the right, it's going to bounce to your left. You've got to anticipate it. Marankis' shoulders slump just a little bit after that ace. And that's ace number six. That's a great kick. Do you see wow. that thing? He that <laughs> comes out of nowhere. And this is what the top guys do. They may give you a sliver, a very small ray of hope. Love 15 second serve. And if you don't take advantage, Big serve, ace. It's rare moments when Djokovic doesn't have his footwork right. You're right, exactly. Rankis has got to take advantage. He's got to up his intensity level right now, his focus. serve is just so hard. And that is all. He hasn't done that in this entire match. And you know why he did it? On the, remember he hit that love 15, hit that second serve kick. And Barankas did not move his feet at all. So he picks up on this and he runs that kick serve every time the rest of the game. That is situational awareness. That is a really smart player with a high tennis IQ. Always looking at the situation, how it's developing. Absolutely, because you've got to torque your back. You've got to arch your back and really explode off your legs and push. Where's that? Where's it? Lithuanian, don't drop shot again. I can't pronounce it twice. get a sliver. Love 15 second serve. You don't take advantage. And then the other guy just capitalizes. Djokovic with precision brings the second set to the brink.
dispatches did you call today? Nothing. Nothing. The day schedule. Used to be. So Novak Djokovic will serve for the second set. Charnas Barancas of Lithuania. I say he's the first Lithuanian to break the top 100 without being rebuffed by you again. No, it, well, you're absolutely right because <laughs> Vitas Vitas was born here, U.S. Oh. Open finalist. 79 lost to Johnny Mackerel, but he did win an Australian Open. <laughs> Brock has just really lost his spirit. You know, he, he was in some rallies, making it long, and now he's. Either he's just blowing this game and start out serving. He's, he's not even holding serve with these. He's just getting out class right now. That's just a weapon on the forehand side. Djokovic is able to really wind up, set up, and hit it. Yeah, he's really got to kick himself in the tail and start fighting a little bit harder. I had this conversation with Chandra Rubin last night. It's got to be a very, very weird feeling to be on the court and maybe not believe that you can win a match. Forget the match. Hopeless to win points. See, right here. I mean, Brankis has doesn't have a clue how he's supposed to win a point. The guy isn't missing. Djokovic is just on target. It's batting practice. It's target practice. Was it up to par? It was totally up to par. <laughs> you know that what they do at the garden? They put little tiny Chive? shrimp. Oh, shrimp in there. Wow. That's a pretty good move, too. Again, it's a whole basketball season here. Oh, I can never last. It's, it's hard. <laughs> How did the studio show work out this year? Fine. No problem, because it was a change. Oh, it worked out. Kelly, you know, did great. Yeah. Well, I watch you guys We have all a lot of fun. Yeah. yeah. Seemed like he lost his spirit at the beginning and at the end, certainly, in that second set. But we'll see now what Richardus Barancas of Lithuania has left here against the number one seed, Novak Djokovic. Oh, he 
he's got the between the legs shot in the, the repertoire. Tweener, the first tweener I've seen of the championship. You know what to me, Luke? What set up the entire point was that vicious backhand that he uh, right, that right. Djokovic hit. Mm -hmm. So this is how you set up for it. You make sure it's right over your right hand shoulder, and then you just snap the wrist. Let the ball drop, and don't follow through. So that just it kills you. The sad thing is, Broncos is better than this. He's just not shown the grit that I've seen in other matches. And I understand it's a big stage, and, and he's just not playing where he feels he should be. But he has got to use this as really a springboard. This set here, you're going down swinging, or you're going down just as fast as you can to get off the stage. point. There you go. Gotcha. An array of shots, cross court, down the line, short shots. He hit a nice little cut, fed, slice backhand, which has a little side spin on it, kick it out. Circumstance is really appropriate. Yes. Pulls an ace out at 120 miles an hour wide, away from the gun. He's had some moments. The crowd has been trying to pull for him, but the Lithuanian making his nighttime Arthur Ashe debut may be overwhelmed, or maybe just as being outplayed, outplayed by Djokovic. Six one six two. <laughs> Look at that speed. Djokovic was going in one direction, right to his left, stops, pivots. Watch this. There's the net court. Djokovic has to move forward from behind the baseline to get this with plenty of time to hit the winner. That's a guy who should be on Dancing with the Stars. <laughs> That's right. He does like to dance.
is a service break, maybe a spirit breaker. Let's check out the stats here, Luke Jensen. Well, the biggest thing you got to look at the unforced errors, and this is just the second set. Just one unforced error. He's giving nothing to Brankus. Brankus has eight unforced errors, only five winners. Djokovic, I mean, just so impressive in every aspect. Just absolutely in control. And they've had many long rallies. Absolutely. Absolutely. But I think Djokovic has outserved him, outreturned him. Definitely outclassed him with the round the net. He's been outstanding. Five for six at the net. That's in the second set alone. Rankis goes a little bit better in the second set around the net. The first set, he was, I think, 0 for 3. If you're Djokovic, this is the perfect kind of first round match, right? Awesome. Hit enough balls, get used to the atmosphere once again. It's a different feel. Playing out here is just, it's hard because there, there isn't another stadium on the planet this big. Did you hear Roger Federer talk? today about missing the opportunity to play last night. It really gave you a sense of how much these players do cherish this chance. Well, you know the entire world watching. You know, during the other, the day matches, everyone's kind of out and about. Everybody's here focused on you. Get right back into this set. Uh, we, we jinxed it. We brought up the unforced errors. That one led us two in a row. Right? That's always a possibility. Hey. And you can watch any elite player on the men's or women's side whenever they need to serve. They're down love 30, 15, 40, love 40. It's that one swing, the one difference maker. And he's not a flamethrower. He just places it so well. I'm surprised he hasn't gone back to the kick serve. That was extremely effective. Yeah, we've only seen two, right? Yep. weapon is that a weapon for some key moment in the future could be I mean but right now you're up two sets to love you're up a break I mean why let the guy even get a sniff that is a future weapon 128 right down the tee beautiful motion notice the toss isn't too high as high as he can reach is that strike zone that's where he's hitting it so he's kind of lifting the ball into that position watch this toss nice and delicate Boom. There's your kick, sir. That really moved. As we move past the hour mark.
Gragas has two challenges remaining. Love 15. from the forehand doesn't back up holds his ground turns his shoulders and an excellent strike it's all balance it's very one-sided oh, yeah. it's not very interesting but i'll tell you what he's showing all the skills that put that one next to his name service game at the end of the first set and then he kind of pulled it together and he just doesn't let the guy off the bat Djokovic just will not allow Brankis into this match at all triple break point he goes to the second serve game okay. Djokovic there you go now Djokovic leads two sets to love, leads by three three games games to love in the third set. Novak Djokovic to serve in complete control of this match against the former U.S. Open junior champion, Charles Barankas of Lithuania. Here's your chance just to get on the scoreboard here in the third set. Third 
Chelsea for him. That honestly is the big difference when we watch these elite players navigate through the first week where they're getting the best shot from these lower ranked players. This is Barankas' Super Bowl. This is the biggest match he can play right now in this career. But it's the timing of it. Yeah. Yeah. And that is Shokovic. And that's what makes a player like that great. Absolutely. They can when do you that. Absolutely need to zero in and focus, and you need wow. that serve. Djokovic leads four games to love. These elite players have another game. The best one in my generation was Pete Sanders. That guy could eliminate and erase a love 40 or 15 40 hole on his serve with two or three swings. Djokovic giving up any ground. I, mean, I just go by, okay, let's go. Who has a better forehand? Who has a better backhand? Who has the most experience? Fitness, you know, tactics. He, Brockes just didn't have anything but honesty. There and just swing from the heels. How long do you think his shoes last? I bet he's in a new pair probably every night. Really? Absolutely. I mean, the way he grinds them into the ground when he's going for, you know, wide shots. He's sliding into so many drop shots and things. 14 One of my favorite tactics, the return and come in, attacking the second serve, second serve only 96 miles, 96 miles an hour there, but it's a short ball. It has to land in the service box, so it's short. Returner really attacks it. You can get a free point. A lot of pressure on the server. Told me Djokovic may be playing a little game with himself when he gets down 15, 40, or 30. Oh, I'm going to come back here. I'm going to tie this. Challenge myself. Yeah. Scoreboard in the third set, but it's still Jokovic all Djokovic here Jokovic. in New York.
so no big goes forward. Chargers Barancas here tonight in New York. Djokovic serving up two sets, up 4-1. Get there. Has he won a drop shot point yet? Where he's initiated the drop shot? Because I don't think he has. And this was his best one so far, and Djokovic was right on it. And he won that point. I thought that was wide. Just have to look for it and watch for it, and then you start saying, "Boy, every time he's been in the jam, his serve has bailed him out." There's another opportunity. This would be a really good time to throw that kick serve. Serious speed, both with his footwork, his processing power, changing st really strategies and strokes. He broke. Yeah, that's big how guy he serve. Yep. Now can he build off of this? Can he can take that momentum into this service game? Consistency, and that's that's why when you look at players that are just these up-and-coming talents, can they just pull it together game after game and keep the focus on the front? Oh. Well, he's got the components to be a good pro. So Absolutely, yo, oh, he's already a good pro. Could he take it to the next level? Can he be a top ten player? Can he really bust it? He's got to be just. Better in all areas. And just like that, the number one seed breaks Djokovic right back and in short order will serve for the match. Once upon a time, there's a little girl. 
service any faster than that? He's going to need to. I haven't seen any 130s. Let's see, his fastest has been 126. Yeah, I mean, I don't think it's the first serve percentage. Look at that. For the match, 53% first serve. To me, that's, you're not making the proper adjustments. You're not, you know, you're not, you're not pitching it well. Well, here's the number. Oh, yeah. For the entire match, you're only winning 28% of your second serve points. And that just shows. And you're that. going there half the time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> serving to end this first round match against Richarda Sparankas of Lithuania. Sparankas has had his moments. He's had some dazzling passing shots. He actually broke the serve and, and then handled it. As Luke and I were talking during the changeover, the prosperity of that very well. of learning experience for Brian. This is something that he's going to carry to the practice court, carry on in his mind as an unbelievable experience where he can squeeze out more performance in his game, both physically and tactically. Oh, and one of the things that I would do if I was Brian is I, I, would, I would find these elite guys, the Dow, Federer, and, and be their punching bag. Try to practice with these guys. You know, if you want to be a smart student, you hang out with the smart kids. If you want to be a really good tennis player, hang out with the really good tennis players. They're going to give you just the insight of how to be professional and how to go about your business and organize. Team. We get to the finals in 91. We have Agassi, Sampras, and these guys. 92, we bring on Johnny Mack. But I learned so much from Johnny Mack how he just went about how to prepare, how to compete, how to fight, and just raise the level of our squad. And just to be around that, practicing singles, doubles. Look at determination to his box. 
And you know, you got seven to win it. He's got six now, six remaining. He's here to take it, to take home the, trip, the Tiffany Trophy. And look at 10 aces. The top, I said he's got to have that serve just on it that opens up the rest of his game. His return is always there, but he's got to have more offense than the serving side. 28 winners, nine unforced there's completely outclassed the local man. And it all happens in a pretty snappy one hour and 22 minutes. Getting set to take the court is Victoria Azarenka, and she will face Dina Fiesenmeyer will be under the lights on the big stage, just like Barankis was tonight. Novak, outstanding start tonight. Did you know right away that you were dialed in in this match? Well, I didn't know, uh, you know, I couldn't predict how I'm going to play. I uh, worked very hard last 10 days in order to get ready for uh, this Grand Slam, the last of the year. And uh, over the course of the last five, six years, I've been making a lot of good results uh, in this court. I love the night session. It's very exciting. So thank you all for coming and, uh, and enjoy the match. Were the conditions the same for you tonight? Are the court playing slower, quicker? Uh, it's tough to say, really. Uh, uh, Berankis is a very talented player. He plays very solid from the baseline, you know, but I managed to, to make a lot of breaks in, uh, in the beginning of the match and, uh, you know, take over the control of the match, and that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to play every point like it's a match point, and uh, I'm very happy with the performance overall. So when you get up a lead like that, you're up two sets, you don't think about, like, oh, maybe I'm going to work on something in this match? <laughs> no. I, th I don't think it's a stage to really work on some things. <laughs> The courts behind the stadium are, are the courts where you work on, the, on your game. Here you try to, uh, try to win every point and uh, embrace every moment playing in, uh, in the biggest stadium in sport. Are you a draw checker? You know, I know some of the players say, no, I don't check the draw at all. Do you have a peek at your draw for the tournament before it starts? I haven't. Uh, this year my, my team knows probably everything, but uh, I'm, uh, I'm refusing to hear anything. Just, uh, just the next opponent, just the next challenge. So you want me to tell you who the winner of your match is, or no, you play the winner of blank and blank? Or do you want to know who you play? Well, I want to know who am I playing, yes. Okay, the guys are battling out on a side court. Very good. Very good, yeah, they're in a battle. Lucas Rousseau is playing Ben Becker. Ben Becker serving for the match. Which set? Which set is the fourth set, and he's got a match point. So I'm getting the information in my ear. Okay, let, okay uh, let's, let, let's wait then, let's wait. Uh, Commissioner Bobby, you got, you got a result for us? Novak wants to know confirmation before he can tell us about his next... It's getting a little tight. You might have a chance to catch the end of it in the locker room. Fifth set. I wish fifth set. <laughs> no, you, you know what? I, unfortunately, not a TV court, but confirmation, Ben Becker is your next opponent. Moving on to the second round. Novak Djokovic. And ladies and gentlemen, before he gets ready for Benjamin Becker, he'll back to So, some uh, autographed tennis balls for the fans. That was an interesting little exchange. Novak Djokovic waits and finally hears who his second round opponent is going to be. Some highlights to talk about. Well, to me, watch his feet. Watch the red shoes. And then, Dorothy, we're not in Kansas anymore. I mean, look at the way he, uh, his agility, and that's where the magic happens. Of, a lot of it on his toes. A lot out of his toes. A, a pro at this level makes 10 to 12, sometimes 13 steps between each shot. So it happens in straight sets about as convincing as it could possibly be for the number one seed. Or in Chartas Barancas of Lithuania, a night he will never forget. But Novak Djokovic on to the second round. Victoria Azarenka next up on Ash.
Ladies and gentlemen, 